What is it, Hoffa Day? My name is Damon Michael from PNC. On this episode of Copy with the Candidates, we are here with senatorial, senatorial candidate on the Republican ticket, Sandra Regis Seau. How are you doing today, ma'am? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. So um, basically, let's go ahead and just jump right into this. And um, I wanted to tell uh, you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Sandra Regis Seau. Um, I am from Guam, from Mariso. My father is retired for Sergeant Manuel Regis, Manuel Flores Regis, and my mom is Irene Sinicholas Regis. They're both from Mariso. Um, and with that being said, my father was active duty military. So I was raised mostly in the States, Alabama and Tennessee, with a couple years in Al um, Hawaii and Germany. Then um, before coming to Guam a little over 10 and a half years ago, uh, I lived in Alaska. I have an 11 year old son. And the reason why I came to Guam was because at the time, shortly after I gave birth, my dad was pretty sickly. So I wanted to give my child the opportunity to know my parents um, because, you know, growing up, we were only able to, you know, see our family every so many years. So I wanted to give my child the opportunity to know my parents. Okay, so, you know, thank you for, for that little <clears throat> brief history about yourself and uh, who you are. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So can you tell us why are you running for senator? You know, originally last election, because I did run in 2020, last election I was upset. I was mm -hmm. upset with the administration and I was very disappointed with the, the legislative branch. But, you know, as time goes on, I thought about, you know, because coming to Guam, before coming to Guam, I was a pretty successful independent minority woman um, in the States. I had the great opportunity with well, working with Wells Fargo and Sam's Club, which gave me a wealth of knowledge and experience. And um, coming to Guam the first eight years, I would, kept asking myself why, you know, did I make a mistake? And I was always asking myself why. And then, you know, I always told myself, Things in life happen for a reason. And then, you know, things in my life here on Guam happen. Happen. I am a survivor of domestic violence here on Guam. And, you know, God doesn't put you through things that he doesn't think you couldn't handle. So it came all together. Putting my personal experiences and my work experiences, the reason why I'm running is for each and every person who made our island a home. It doesn't matter if you're Caucasian, Filipino, Chamorro, you know, from the FSM, every person who's made our island home is my why, um, is my why. You know, um, that, that's a really beautiful statement. So um, with you running, what is your current platform that you are looking to achieve and accomplish? A uh, major on my platform is public safety and violent crimes against people government accountability and transparency and our veterans. So let's, let's go ahead and just dive into public safety and why public safety. Is that considered your number one priority? Um, because crime is really bad here on our island and who better to address crime than a survivor of violent crimes, you know, and, and I want to help to support our local law enforcement and our DOC officers, you know, they, they deserve it. They deserve better packages. We need to try to retain them. First, we need to recruit them. I mean, these people, it's their passion to do what they do. You know, but in order for us to recruit them and retain them, I believe they deserve better packages, um, benefit packages, retirement packages, and we need to offer them the resources and able to do their job. We do need more officers out in the street, out in our communities, um, so people can see them, you know. So let's go ahead and move on to the second portion of your platform. You were talking about government accountability. Can you explain a little bit of what you mean by government accountability and how you can accomplish <clears throat> that? Okay, for me, because um, I was operations manager, you know, for me, I feel that we need to start from the inside out. We do need to support our public auditor because they are the ones who make sure that all our agencies um, follow policy and procedures and account for monies within our government. So once we get you know, everything squared away from the inside, then we can work our way out and start to flourish from there. 
Okay, so now with that uh, being said, of course, the last one that you talked about was your vet the veterans here on island, and also, of course, uh, local veterans that are off island. How can you accomplish, and what are you trying to accomplish with the veterans? Well, you know, <clears throat> we have the most people per capita serving under our nation's flag. We have the, mo the most veterans living here on Guam than any state or territory. You know, and the excuses are, I mean, our veterans have been asking for, you know, resources for years now. And, you know, I'm sort of tired of talking about the same thing every year, every election. It's time that we take care of our veterans. I mean, what they're asking for is nothing compared to the sacrifices they've made. Yeah, and so for me, they keep saying, well, in the States, in the States, they do this. And, you know, I really don't care. You know, we need to take care of our people here. But uh, so uh, just the second portion of it, how can, how can you accomplish that? Like what kind of ways do you f feel that we can take care of the veterans? Here on well, you know, I want to do whatever we can locally, but most of it is federal. So working with our next congressman or pushing the issue with our next congressman to get get what we need for our veterans. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go on to the, the next question. So if, if elected and you were in office, what will be your first bill that you would try to accomplish? Well, it wouldn't be necessarily making a bill. It's mostly amending bills. You know, I mean, we could create all these bills we want, but there's all these bills that we already have currently. And for me, it's amending some bills. Amending bills like, uh, I believe it was Bill 142-36. And I do apologize. Um, but to me, Bill 142-36, you know, it doesn't matter the age of a victim. You know, because they say if the victim is under the age of 18, then if the perpetrator the perpetrator gets sent, um, charged with fourth degree crim sexual criminal conduct. Well, to me, it doesn't matter the age of a victim because a crime is a crime. So I, I want to amend that. I want to amend the plea deals and uh, harsher sentencing, um, not only for child abuse, sex crimes, domestic violence, but all crimes. I want to raise the minimums on the sentencing guidelines because I believe people should be held accountable for their actions. You know, so we do talk about crime a lot. <clears throat> and one of the things I've always wondered is, why do you think uh, crime is so heavy here on Guam? What, what reasons could there be? It's the alcohol and drugs. But you know, that's not an excuse because a person knows what happens when they pick up that alcohol bottle. They know what can happen if they use meth for the first time. You know, it's it could be addicting and you, you know, things may happen. And it, it's hard because, you know, if someone does finally acknowledge that they have an issue, we do have to offer the resources available to them so they could become a better person. Um, if they get sentenced to prison, we need to offer the resources in prison because I've been told I've met people who recent recently been um, in prison and they said there's no resources in them in there to help them for when they come out into you know the community but uh, it's alcohol and drugs but to me that's really not an excuse for what you do to other people I believe if you alter someone's life or you murder somebody you need to be held accountable what do you think is the proper justification in terms of how long someone should be sentenced for these kinds of things? Do you, uh, do you think that maybe some people just make mistakes and should be given second chances or is it a purely harsher thing? Well, for like sexual abuse, domestic violence and stuff like that, you know, minimum to me would probably be 15 years. Um, that's where I want to start the um, the harsher sentencing because we can't start it at zero. I don't want to give the judges that much leeway, you know, starting at 15 years um, and then they can work from there because we can't really blame the judges for the sentencing being handed out because you have people 
committing murder that get a couple years, probably nothing, probation. And we can't blame it. It's the lawmakers who make those laws. Um, as far as altering someone's life, because just recently there was a kid, well, a young man, 20 years old, who uh, went to go check why the dog is barking, you know, and he had his head practically slashed in half. You know, to me, if you alter someone's life or commit murder, um, very harsh, very harsh, probably like starting, I don't know, for the perpetrator, almost the rest of their life because those victims have to live with that or, you know, those some are dead. So if you alter someone's life, they're going to live with that the rest of their life. So I believe the perpetrator should live with that too. Is there anything else you would like to say to the audience, uh, members of the community or anything like that? Sure. Hi, my name is Sandra Regis Seau and I'm number eight on the Republican ballot. And I hope that you and your family and your friends give me the opportunity to serve the people of our island. Awesome. Thank you very much. So that is all the time we have for today's episode of Coffee with the Candidates. I would like to thank everyone and see you on the next one.